So this is a video that I wasn't really going to make considering, you know, I kind of clickbait quite a bit with these uh, these videos here. And a lot of what I'll do is just joking about the game and different tiles and metas and stuff like that. But this is genuinely going to be me sitting down telling you guys this game has a competitive problem. Now you might be thinking, well, Brad Mouse, this game is not competitive. Why are we talking about a competitive scene in a game that's not competitive? Well, there's two big reasons for it. You see, number one, this game's player base, at least right now, is consistently playing on the multiplayer aspect. You see, the game released last month and thus everything offline is pretty much over and done with. Custom battles have slowed down and reduced to just people mashing together characters with no sense of. Even any cutscenes. The number one custom battle of all time, at least on PC, is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta vs Kaba. Uh, so much so that the game has literally no way to register the fact that it has over 10,000 players uh, that have completed it. So, all in all, offline content for the game, at least right now, is kind of in the dump. And so, people are likely still playing for the online aspect. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is a fact. This is based on what I can assume from the 90% player drop off. Now, all the offline content is done, and thus people are sticking around for the online ranked and player matches. And not sticking around for World Tournament because World Tournament is dead as crap. And if you want to play World Tournament, you gotta deal with the streamers there. But that's besides the point. I'm saying that this game's player base is sticking around for the multiplayer aspect. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because if a game is trying to survive off of the multiplayer aspect, then the multiplayer needs to be good, right? Well, it, to an extent, it is. Like, gameplay and fundamentally wise, it is good, it's fine, it gets a job done. My main issue are two things. Meta and variety. Let's start out with meta. Now, you may or may not know this, but in the video game world, meta is actually an acronym. It stands for Most Efficient Tactics Available. Now, it's probably self-explanatory, but I'll explain it anyway. Basically, what meta means in a nutshell is the optimal setup. What is more likely to get you the win, or what is more likely to get you the objective faster. It's basically the most efficient and optimal kind of playstyle you want to go with if you want to win. Now, in ranked, this is especially prevalent. The reason why solo matches were pretty dead in the water initially it was because everyone was running Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Why was that, you ask? Because Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is the meta. He's, without a doubt, one of, if not the strongest character in the game when you use him in solo fights. I even made a video covering about how broken he was, like, less than a few, less than a few weeks after the game released. I was pointing this out as this character was an issue, he was too overwhelming for single player matches to be fun. If you want to go check that video out, I will leave a link in the description below, but otherwise let's move on. What I'm saying is that because there's this obsession with meta and the most optimal setup, you'll come across the same sort of teams and the same sort of playstyles. One playstyle is full giants, such as Dr. Wheelo, Giant 8 Vegeta, Janemba, Hyrudagon. Basically an entire setup full of giants in DP battle. The reason why this is an optimal setup is because most of the giant characters don't cast that much and thus are really expendable and easy to part the team. They have multiple health bars, they do absurd damage amounts, they have some level of super armor against most characters in the game. You're basically forced to run a character that can either tackle giants or is powerful enough in the universe itself to actually you know, get through their super armor. However, when people play these full giant setups, they're not doing it because they like giant characters, at least not most of the time. The majority of the time, these giant teams will have some sort of method or tactic that people will use in order to exploit uh, the win. For example, one player I saw playing as a full giant team was just constantly charging uh, Z-Vanish attacks, where basically they charge up a melee hit and they teleport behind and spam it. The reason why this is an issue is because, number one, it was unblockable, Number two, it's almost impossible to get them out of it since there's extra armor applied when charging attacks. And number three, even if they even if the attack didn't connect, they would still have enough time to turn around and start spamming key blasts, the throw. It was just a very, very annoying and awkward situation, especially on a smaller map like World Tournament and C Stage. And then there's the second variety of meta player, which is the high tension slash sparking mode key blast spammer. 
Now this car this kind of playstyle is commonly paired with characters that have unblockable ultimates. The most common example I've seen so far is Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and Master Roshi. Also uh, Legendary Super Saiyan Broly was another very very popular example at the time. Where basically you overwhelm your opponent so with so many key blasts that cast no key. They're either forced to block or deflect, but even when they block and deflect, there's like a delay in your animation where while you're deflecting or blocking, they can launch an unblockable ultimate and you are basically stuck. Wild Sense does not work while you're uh, deflecting key blasts or doing any kind of action, but you can't even rely on evasion moves for it to work. And then lastly, we have the most infamous and widely popularized in recent times playstyle, the Dr. Juro in 19. If you don't know, Dr. Juro and 19 are android characters, so basically they can't charge, they have to rely on grabs, and using false courage to make their grabs easier to connect. However, one of the benefits that Dr. Juro and 19 have is that they are able to basically dash constantly with like minimal loss to key. You may have seen this before, but this is called the Fatherless Child Method, where basically the player will reenact what their father did 15 years ago to go get the milk, by avoiding any kind of responsibility going up and down, avoiding any kind of contact whatsoever, or at least waiting until the ultimate gauge has run out. Now, you will see this very commonly, not just with Jiro, but other players tend to do it, but it's less viable on other characters since, you know, key consumption is a lot higher for non-Android characters and, well, Dr. Jiro and 19 have basically no key to consume when dashing. This was widely popularized during the Sparking Zero Ultimate Showdown uh, finals, where a Jiro and 19 player were going against each other, constantly going up and down, up and down, pretty much for about a solid two minutes. It got so unbearable to watch that the actual commentators turned off the gameplay footage and just started having a conversation while these two players kept doing this bullcrap. And it got so bad that there was no winner decided within the time frame that one of the players was pulled aside and told to change characters. And they literally said in response that if they changed characters, they would lose. And unsurprisingly, they would lose. So what am I, what am I trying to say here? I'm saying that meta is kind of overruling the game right now in terms of its rank scene and competitive scene. And this makes anyone else, like for example casual players or players who like to hop on and off the game every so often, it makes the experience just infinitely worse because there's just nothing unique to go against. It's bull crap, it's just people thirsty for wins. And Bandai have done nothing to kind of encourage people to play as different characters outside of just giving them a title for 50, uh, 50 plays as a character. And proficiency doesn't really do many favours either, considering to get the max proficiency on a character, you need to win as them 200 times. So yeah, that's definitely something. And now let's touch on the variety. Now, this game has, what, over 150 characters, maybe even more than that, especially with DLC on the way. Now, tell me why the, some people waited 17 years for this game to drop, and they decided to play as Master Roshi, Videl, Pan, Dragon Ball Goku, and Super Vegito. Now what do these five characters all have in common? They all have After Image Strike. Now fundamentally After Image Strike was always a broken move, it was never a balanced move in the first place. It was so broken that explosive wave moves were literally made redundant because After Image would proc so many times that the move would not register any kind of damage and thus be wasted. So yeah, it is very very strong, but bringing that move into online makes playing against these characters unbearably annoying. Now we can argue all day long say, oh the game's not balanced so why does it matter? What matters is that this game just does not become fun to play when this is all you ever do. You don't see people playing these characters because you know they like the characters, you see people playing these characters because they have after image strike. And what multiple matches of playing against these characters with this move does, is it sets a big presidential standard to the player playing as them. So you could go against, like, I don't know, Master Roshi fan 420, who really loves playing as Master Roshi and nothing else. He just likes Master Roshi. But because you played against someone who used Master Roshi and absolutely abused After Image Strike multiple times, and abused his unblockable super attack, and abused his unblockable ultimate, it just, it, it's become such a frustrating experience that 
you end up just viewing that player as a cheeser. Even though, for all you know, they could just really like the character. Like, you see the character appear in battle and you just get grown and you go, oh, here we go. Like, I just think that sucks that we've reached a point where certain characters just get this reputation where it's just like, oh boy, here we go. And it's not fun because we have a roster of 150 characters and yet we only ever see the same 15 characters because of one move. So there's no variety. We saw Whis for a good time, but people dropped him because he was so expensive and just not worth the cast. We saw Beerus for a good while because, again, expensive, but not worth the cast. We see UI Goku because he's just so strong and he has his own, like, wild sense and stuff, but why bring one UI Goku who casts, like, 9 points when you can bring, like, a bunch of after image strike characters who cast, like, 3 points? It really just boils down to the game lacking that variety and matches becoming tedious and boring. Only the same few characters every single time because why run anyone else? No reason to. So what can we do to fix this? Now there is a big Google document that a bunch of Dragon Ball content creators put together to help fix the game's issues in terms of gameplay and ranking. Now luckily we did get word that Bandai have started to become stricter on rage quits by increasing the penalty of people who rage quit and not, you know, <laughs> giving the win to the person who didn't leave and giving a loss to the person who left. If I was to fix the uh, rage quiz uh, issue, sorry, I would make it similar to how Dead by Daylight handles disconnect players, where every time you disconnect from a match, it would put a PvP timer on, where the more you disconnect from a match, the bigger that timer gets until it gets to a point where you just can't play uh, multiplayer anymore for about <laughs> for multiple hours because you disconnected so many times. I think that system is pretty fair and discourages players to disconnect so fre frequently. It also makes sure that, you know, people finish their matches and get their ranked points, that sort of thing. And it just overall makes the experience more enjoyable, I feel. It's so I, I would honestly just consider putting in a system where you punish people for disconnecting, like, mid-match. And I'll obviously reward the person who didn't disconnect. As for the variety issue, I think we should be making after Me Strike cast significantly more. Like... Yajirobe received basically an immediate nerf because of how strong his healing was. So I don't see why we couldn't apply this to After Image Strike. Let's make After Image Strike cost 5 bars rather than the free it costs now. Or alternatively, make After Image Strike have less procs. Or make After Image Strike get procced less by mail, get procced once by every type of attack. That way, it becomes more diverse and more unique in how you use the move. You dodge a few times with a few melee attacks, you dodge a few key blast attacks, and then that's it. Or have a, a counter system where you can only dodge a certain number of attacks a certain number of times. So after we try, let's say the maximum actually you can dodge is five. I think that's perfectly reasonable, but you guys can let me know if what changes you would make to make these kind of teams more bearable to fight against. And as for Giants, I can only just say one thing, and that's just increase the damage they take. I think that's reasonable enough. They can be annoyingly strong and whatever, but I think the only way to make it more bearable to actually go against is by making Giants more glass cannon -y. Uh Grave Vegeta kind of has this system in place already, where if he uses Howl or any other type buff move, he gets the defense down. I think that would be a very healthy addition to the game, where... Giant characters are a risk reward type of character and not so much just a big bulky just annoying cheese machine. But yeah, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, honestly, I just hope that the December patch fixes a lot of things because this game is not looking so good when it comes to the multiplayer scene. And for a game that's kind of clinging onto multiplayer in terms of its player count right now, I think it's very important to address these issues as soon as possible and make it so is more enjoyable and one last change i want to implement is that if you use a character too many times you get less and less ranked points therefore you get encouraged to use different characters and using newer characters will give you more ranked points i think that would just encourage the meta to be more diverse and more different rather than just the same five characters over and over and over again but well, you guys will let me know in the comments below what you think and as always i'll see you all in the next dragon ball spark is video Peace out and goodbye.